Okay, well, like, like quite a few TDs, I'm caught a bit on the hop on the uh, speed of this, uh, um, not just today, but uh, in terms of just catching up with the issue. Quite happy to admit that. But um, uh, first of all, yeah, let me say that um, I agree with uh, Deputy Connolly on the seaweed issue. Uh, it may be of interest for people to know, for those of you who are uh, Bob Marley fans, that uh, when Bob Marley came to Ireland, uh, he was extremely disappointed uh, that his favourite food, which he thought was going to be available in abundance in Ireland, uh, was a seaweed dish called Irish moss, which is hugely popular in Jamaica. Uh, and he assumed that when he got to Ireland that uh, Irish moss uh, as a food would be widely available, but uh, it wasn't to be found anywhere. Um, which is just an interesting kind of point about this huge resource uh, with potentially many, many, many benefits that uh, we don't take half seriously enough. Um, and of course, there are many, many other issues about the harvesting uh, of uh, seaweed and how we handle that. So I think, uh, and of course, access to the foreshore uh, for people who gather seaweed and so on. Uh, so I think uh, Deputy Connolly is absolutely right um, in calling for a seaweed policy. Uh, and I think the government should take it seriously. It might seem silly, but uh, in fact, when you look into it in any in any way at all. I think it's a very, very serious point. It's a resource, uh, it's a pastime, uh, it's, as Bob Marley understood, it was a food and for a healthy form of sustenance. Uh, it uh, may have impacts in terms of reduction of methane for uh, cattle uh, who are fed on it, uh, to name just a few possible uses. Um, the other kind of interesting story about rights of way which just came to mind as I, I'm leaf, desperately leafing through from my notes here uh, is that one of my political heroes, uh, Karl Marx, uh, was propelled into, uh, uh, into political activism by the issue of rights of way. Um, uh, so it might be a warning to the government if you don't want a, a proliferation of Karl Marx's uh, <laughs> in Ireland as a result of disputes over rights of way, you need to get the issue of uh, you know, how we handle rights of way, register them and so on, uh, to get them right. Um, in the case of Karl Marx, it was a campaign over the enclosure of uh, woodland, uh, which previously had been rights of way for uh, farmers and uh, rural workers and uh, people in rural areas of Germany who enjoyed completely free and unfettered access uh, to woodlands to gather uh, dead wood and to hunt uh, for uh, animals, for food, for sustenance. Um, and then as part of the, if you like, the enclosure and commodification and privatization of the commons, of the common land, of the forests, uh, wh where that f previously free and unfettered access to woodlands uh, became hampered uh, by enclosure, by people fencing off particular lands and forests, became a massive area of dispute where there were literally pitched battles in Germany in the 1840s uh, over access uh, to woodlands uh, and to common er or what had previously been uh, seen as common areas, and it was that particular issue that politically radicalised Karl Marx and set him on the road to, uh, you know, essentially becoming the pioneer of modern socialism. So, if you don't want more revolutionaries, Minister, <laughs> the government they need to get the issue of rights of way uh, right, um, and. Uh, you know, I, obviously, I mean, I'm not in a rural, well, there's a bit of our constituency is rural up, heading up towards the Dublin Mountains and the uh, border with uh, Wicklow. So some of the issues that maybe are more familiar to people in rural areas uh, do have an impact in our constituency. But uh, the foreshore 
very much does. And I, I certainly know, for example, there was a, a right of way uh, off Sorrento Terrace in Dawkey, which used to be accessed down towards the foreshore facing Dawkey Island, which was fenced off um, and caused absolute uproar uh, there. And because we don't have the proper sort of delineation of where rights are way and then you have the disputes and I don't I, I, I understand that you know landowners also have rights and concerns and so on uh, but uh, I in a way I think the responsibility well not in a way I think uh, the, the responsibility for these things becoming very problematic and for rights of way not being fully uh, protected registered and mapped ultimately the responsibility lies with uh, uh, with government uh, and if government was more proactive in ensuring that these things were properly mapped, that there was a, a, a registration process that didn't end up uh, with people in uh, protracted legal battles or leading to sort of pitched battles and disputes uh, uh, between neighbours and uh, within communities, uh, then you know we could it, that would be a good thing. And uh, I'm aware that certainly here. We seem to be far less thorough, we are far less thorough than many, many countries uh, in Europe in uh, guaranteeing the rights of people uh, to access to rights of way, uh, 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 to common land, and you know, just to, to ramble uh, free, freely across the country. Um, in Germany, uh, people have the right to roam freely in, frost, in forested areas, as well as unclosed land, like heats and marches, uh, marshes. In Austria, you've the uh, freedom to walk and run in Austria's forests is enshrined in fed, federal law. Um, uh, the, in, in Switzerland, Swiss have the right to roam uh, under their civil code, which extends to forests and pasture land, whether private or publicly owned. Um, uh, uh, the Swedes have a right to enjoy nature everywhere except in private gardens close to people's homes and on cultivated land. Um, so, whereas in Ireland it's far, far more uh, restrictive uh, than all of that. So, I think something has to be done about that and uh, I, know, I think I'm correct in saying that uh, the National Trails Office of Sports Ireland is responsible for waymark trails in Ireland and there are about 40 waymark tra uh, trails, uh, which seems to me a very low number. Um, and when you consider you know, the degree to which, uh, particularly during COVID and the pandemic, people have rediscovered the importance of uh, walking in the countryside, uh, on the coastline, in forests, uh, that uh, that seems like a very, very low number. And where they are waymarked, I just think of a, a, a couple in our own area, the success of the Wicklow Way, the success of the Dublin Mountains Way. Uh, because they are marked, people know where they are. There is huge usage of those, uh, uh, of those trails, and it's a very, very good thing. It's a, you know, it's a real uh, boost in the available amenity for people and healthy exercise. Uh, for people, which has numerous benefits, uh, because it's a healthy, uh, a healthy and positive uh, activity, um, but that seems like a remarkably low number uh, of trails and rights of way to uh, be marked. Uh, and I, I, I understand the, the ordnance survey maps, for example, don't include uh, reference to rights of way. Um, and it just it, it occurred to me most recently, obviously in the in the campaign we had around the Kilgar. Forest, which is a Quilcha uh, forest, which was uh, we discovered as a result of a tip-off from walkers, was being sold, um, uh, being advertised for sale, uh, even though this was actually part of a marked uh, walkway, part of the Dublin Mountain Way. Um, and were it not for walkers who used it regularly, I never would have heard about it. Uh, it wouldn't have been brought into this house. Uh, Quilcher wouldn't have been forced to um, have to justify themselves and then subsequently agree they'd made the wrong decision uh, and abandoned the sale. And as a result, a public amenity forest, a right of way, uh, and a marked, uh, a marked trail has been saved uh, from potential uh, privatisation because some people at least knew where that trail was 
uh, and used it regularly. And I think indeed they've done a huge service to the people of the area because a lot more people now, I mean, there was a huge response, popular, tremendous response to that particular uh, situation. And a lot of people since have been saying, where is that walkway? I'd love to go there. Um, uh, and in fact, if I might just get on the record, because I didn't say this last week, we were so pleased just to stop the sale, that uh, that, that woodland should actually be developed now, in my opinion, as a community woodland. I mean, one of the things that the, when we were talking about forests last week is that uh, the, there is a commitment to develop community woodlands uh, in forest policy but the delivery on the establishment of community woodlands has been pitifully poor, pitifully poor, a very, very small number. Uh, in, in the case of the, the Kilagar forest, Quilcha in fact did say, seeing as uh, basically popular outcry, spearheaded by those walkers, has led them to reconsider their, well, to abandon the sale, but actually to reconsider that, the use of that particular forest. Uh, and I would urge them, and I think they were sort of hinting at this in the conversation mm -hmm. I had with them, that they would move it towards biodiversity uses and towards the development of a community woodland. But that actually, to my mind, should be happening on a much more proactive basis uh, across the country in a systematic way of identifying and mapping and properly registering with the state, if you like, possibly via the local authorities, taking the proactive lead uh, to identify where these uh, rights of way are, making sure they're marked, making sure the public uh, are aware of them, uh, but also having a way to deal with any possible disputes that may come up, because I do want to repeat, I understand landowners and so on have legitimate concerns uh, about, uh, about these things. So I welcome the fact that the, uh, the, the minister, this legislation is dealing with the possible cliff that we were going over at the end of the month. I commend uh, Senator Alice Mary Higgins, who I believe was instrumental in ensuring uh, that uh, you know, the government were made aware uh, of the need to, uh, to do this. But I do think beyond this particular piece of legislation, uh, we need to, in a far, far more proactive way, uh, understand the vital importance of rights of way, the access issues, rambling and so on, even more so after COVID with this rediscovery by many people uh, of uh, the importance of those walkways uh, and uh, to have a proper system of, if you like, protecting them uh, and a way of dealing with disputes uh, which is least onerous on people where there may be disputes over those particular things. So thanks very much.